So today we are going to cover first the bivariate correlation. So in this bivariate correlation, the I will be talking first again for those of you who have attended this SPSS workshop, it may be a repetition for you people. But since uh, we are uh, doing this workshop, taking care of all those who have joined this workshop for the first time. So we will be talking about the basic concepts first, then we'll uh, you know, tell you what are the research question to answer which we need the bivariate correlation the underlying assumptions and hypothesis, the commands and interpretation, and the overall summary. So in this case, if we go for this basic concept, so this correlation, whenever we talk this term correlation, it is a technical or a statistical term by which we mean that it determines the strength. It has got two components. First is the strength, and second is the direction. So like value of correlation coefficient tells about the strength, and then whether it is a plus or minus sign, it tells you the direction of the two continuous variables. So now you know what a variable is. And we studied yesterday four scales of measurement. That is the nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And again, in the continuous type of data, we saw what is a discrete and what is a continuous, what is a categorical variable, and then how we can interchange between the continuous and categorical variable and what is the value, which is the strength in which, which uh, one is the weakest and the other is the strongest. If we take from the nominal, which is the weakest and this continuous is the strongest. And we also learned like how to enter the data. So if the inherent nature of the data is continuous in nature, don't convert it into the categorical while you are entering the data. Once you have a continuous data, you can make n number of categories depending on the various cutoff. So this correlation we always talk in regard to two continuous variables. So both the variables should be continuous in nature. Now, if we talk about the properties of correlation coefficient r, because you will be calculating this whenever you put this uh, command of this bivariate correlation, you get a statistics, which is the r. And this R is also known as the coefficient of correlation, and it measures the strength of relationship. The signs of the sign of this correlation coefficient tells you what is the direction. That means if you increase the dependent independent uh, dependent variable, what will happen to the independent one? Uh, so this uh, the dependent variable we want to see the change in the dependent variable. And this magnitude of correlation coefficient r, it uh, conveys the strength of association. So it has got like, it ranges from minus, uh, I mean, zero to one with the sign with it. And it tells you regarding the uh, uh, strength of the correlation, uh, uh, strength of the association. And we'll see how we uh, the classify the strength of correlation. And it values ranges from minus one to plus one. But correlation never imply causation because for to say that this variable is causal for this x variable or this independent variable is the causal factor for the dependent variable, we need to satisfy the Hill's criteria, with which we know that there are eight to 12 criteria of this Hill causation. So this only this strength of correlation, this is definitely one of the criteria, the strength of association. But if the two variables are correlated, we can never say that, we can never imply that it is causal in nature. So whenever we use this term causal, you should remember very well all those criteria which we use to say about the uh, two variables, whether they are causal or not. So this correlation coefficient, it values, uh, we classify it in three categories. There is a small correlation, moderate correlation, and strong correlation. So if the value of this correlation coefficient is between 0.1 to 0.3, we call it as a small correlation. If the value is between 0.3 to 0.5, we call it as a more, uh, moderate correlation. And if the value is more than 0.5, then we call it as a strong correlation. So now what are the research question for which we need such correlation coefficient to answer? So the, the research question you want to test whether there is any relationship between the serum vitamin D level and serum calcium level. So then you can apply this correlation because both of these variables are continuous in nature. Another, correlate, another research question could be whether you want to know any relationship exists between the sleep duration 
and the percentage of marks which is obtained in the final examination. That means maybe the sleep duration, you can measure it in hours and then the percentage of marks, which again, a continuous variable, which the student get, got in, get in the final examination. And if you want to know whether there is a like female literacy, which is again a continuous variable, whether it has got any relationship between the, with the mater, infant mortality. So female literacy and infant mortality, again, these two variables are continuous in nature and you can apply a correlation to see this. Now in all these things, what have you observed that there are two continuous variable and you want to measure the, I mean, association between the two continuous variable. So in this case, appropriate statistical test would be the Pearson correlation coefficient, Pearson correlation. It is named by the person Pearson and there is another correlation which we'll see in the JAMOV and it is there in the SPSS, which is known as the Spearman correlation. So that we apply this Pearson correlation, one of the assumption is that the data should be normally distributed. That means it should be normal uh, distribution. And then uh, it is always, uh, you should uh, be cautious enough not to make a categorical variable or not to select a categorical variable for a Pearson correlation. Definitely, if you, if you have got this ordinal uh, category, then you can apply the Spearman correlation or there is another correlation, which is the biserial correlation. But we are not going to cover that uh, biserial correlation. But again, definitely Spearman you can apply if you got an ordinal data also. So like in this case, if you have a serum vitamin D level and if you have made a category, so you have defined a category of this vitamin D level like less than 10 nanogram per deciliter and more than 10 nanogram per deciliter. Similarly, the calcium level you have defined as less than 5 milligram per deciliter and more than 5 milligram per deciliter. So this was for the first research question. Second research question we studied regarding that sleep duration and percentage of marks obtained in the final examination. Again, if someone has categorized it like less than six hours since beginning and more than six hours, and again, the percentage of marks also, if he has categorized like less than 50% and more than 50%, then you can never apply correlation. Similarly, here also you can say that the female literacy, it has been categorized as low and high. Similarly, the state infant mortality rate, if you have categorized it like low and high, so it is it is uh, having two categories. So you can make two by two contingency table, uh, table and you can do the chi-square testing. But in this case, Pearson correlation cannot be applied to measure the association. So bivariate correlation will not be applied here. So many times students come to us with the data set which has a categorical data. And the, the, I mean, the problem with this uh, software, like if you will give command, it will give you with it one, two also, it will give you some correlation coefficient, but that is not interpretable. So that's why it is very important what you put in the command and what variable you choose. So for this correlation coefficient, you should never have a categorical variable as a, uh, as a, as a type of variable. So now there are a few underlying assumptions for this correlation and you should always check these assumptions before you apply this correlation. So talking about the first assumption is that the two continuous uh, variable, it all the two variables should be on continuous scale and it should be paired. Now, what do you mean by paired? Paired means the both the variable should be of the same person. We will read about this paired value in the paired t-test also. Like for example, if I take the blood pressure and BMI from the same person, these two variables are paired for that individual. So paired values are known as two values of the same person. So that we mean by the paired value. So if you have to apply bivariate correlation, the variable which you choose, it should be a paired value. It should not be uh, like one, uh, uh, like uh, we say that one with one set of individual, like if you have got two groups, many people, they do RCT, you have a intervention group and you have a control group. And if you measure two variables in these two separate group, then you cannot apply correlation between these two separate group. So for correlation, it should be a paired value. Similarly, 
there is one more assumption, which is a very important assumption that both these variable should be linearly associated with each other. Now, how do we check for this linear relationship between the two variables? So we check it by the scatter plot. We will see in the Jamo V, this option is there in the plot also, or when you apply this correlation, this, this option is there, there also, unlike SPSS. Because in SPSS, those of you who have used SPSS, you have to use scatter plot separately. But the advantage of Jamo V is that it that scatter plot option is there right there in the command of correlation. So that's that's a very good option there because you don't have to navigate separately through some other command. The third option is there should be no significant outliers because this correlation is sensitive to outliers. And for outliers, you always plot box plot. So that you have to check separately in the descriptive, which we uh, exploratory, which we did yesterday. So for box plot, this option is not there in the correlation. So you have to check it separately in the descriptive. And then it needs to, to satisfy the assumption of normality also. So for normality and for outlier, you need to go to the exploratory option of GEMOV and you need to check these variables. Now, coming to the linear relationship versus non-linear relationship. So in the case of a linear view, we will see also in the scatter plot, this classical linear relationship is very difficult to get. So this uh, straight line and the dots which you are seeing it, these two are, it's a hypothetical graph, which is showing that all the individual data points, they are almost, uh, I mean, parallelly going to this line. So this is the line and this says about the linear relationship. But if you see this graph, this is the non-linear. So this is again non-linear and this is again non-linear. But in this case also, because in this case, it is certain that if one variable is increasing, the other variable is also increasing. So although this is a non-linear relationship, still this is somewhat near to linear. So you can still apply correlation in this case. But in the last case, this one example, you cannot apply correlation. So ideally, there should be a linear relationship, but even if it is a slight deviation from the linearity like this, you can apply bivariate correlation. In correlation, we again define one term, which is known as the coefficient of determination. Now, what do we understand by this coefficient of determination? So this is denoted by R square. And what is this R? This R is the Pearson correlation coefficient. So whenever you square it, the values and you multiply it by 100 to make it a percentage, it is known as the coefficient of determination. This values tells us that how much percentage of the variation in the dependent variable is due to the independent variable. In this case, if you see this correlation coefficient with the research question first, the so first research question what we taught the relationship between the serum vitamin D level and serum calcium. So if the value of correlation coefficient is 0.552 for this, the value of correlation coefficient for sleep duration and percentage of marks, this is approximately 0.702. And the third research question about the state literacy, like female literacy and the infant mortality rate, it is minus 0.801. So these values tells us only the strength and direction of the relationship between the two variables. Now, if you want to know how much the variation in one variable is explained by another variable. So you want to see the magnitude of variation. So that's how we determine the coefficient of determination. So you want to see the variation in serum vitamin D level from one person to another person. It can be explained by what percentage of change in calcium or the variation in the percentage marks obtained from one student to another student can be explained by sleep duration by what percentage, or similarly, the infant mortality rate and the literacy, female literacy rate by what percentage. So if you square this, you can see value of R square will be 0 0.301. In this case, second case, it will be 0 0.492. And in the third case, it, this R square will be 0 0.641. It is the negative, so this R square it always tells the variation. That's why this plus or minus sign 
disappears because if minus sign is there, if you square it, it will become plus. So now if you multiply this by 100, so what do we mean by this 30.4? So this 30.4 says that 30.4 percentage of change in vitamin D is due to C change in serum calcium. Similarly, you can say here because percentage of marks is the dependent. So you can say that the 49.2 percent of the change in marks is due to this uh, sleep duration. That means uh, this sleep duration is responsible 49.2 percent of this change in uh, marks percentage. Similarly, you can interpret with the uh, female literacy and the infant mortality rate. Now, what is the null and alternate hypothesis for this? So the null hypothesis is that, that, that the population, because we always take the sample, we, we did it yesterday, that whatever research we are doing, we want to estimate the population parameter through sample statistics. So this correlation coefficient is an example of interpretive or the inferential statistics. It is not an example of descriptive because yesterday what we did mean, median, mode, standard deviation, variance, it was all descriptive uh, statistics. But today we are going to cover the inferential statistics where you are projecting the population parameter. So here what we consider in the null hypothesis is through sample statistics, whatever you project the population parameter, this population co correlation coefficient is equal to zero. Whereas in the alternate hypothesis, we say that this population correlation coefficient is not equal to zero. So now coming to, coming to the question, which I have to demonstrate. So this is, I have to first, I'll show you the demonstration of correlation, determination of correlation coefficient between the BMI and cholesterol. And then we can see where you have to take out the value of this correlation coefficient, as well as the coefficient of determination. This coefficient of determination, you have to multiply it because this doesn't come uh, as an output in the JAMOV. And then it is some description which I have just, I, I tried to write. And then there's another, this thing, correlation matrix, where you apply many correlations. So here you can see there's a BMI, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, SpO2, cholesterol, cortisol, vitamin D, etc. So I'll go to this JAMOV data sheet. This is the data and this is the output. So in JAMOV, we saw yesterday that in the single view, it gives you both the data view as well as the output view. So in this case, you can see that we I have to first demonstrate the correlation between the BMI and cholesterol. So I'll check the assumptions. So the first assumption was both these variables should be of continuous in nature. So if you see this value of cholesterol, this is the BMI. BMI is again a continuous data here. And if you come to cholesterol, this cholesterol, you can see it is also a continuous data. So this is the two type of continuous. Both the variables are continuous and this is paired value. That means it is the value of a single individual. We discussed yesterday that in Jamovi or in any software, the one row represents the one person or one subject and one column represents the one variable. So this is a paired data because it represents a single uh, row. So this both BMI score and cholesterol are paired data. So my first assumption is met. My second assumption is that the data should be normally distributed and it should be, it should have no outlier or very insignificant number of outliers. So for that, I'll go to this analysis and then go to this exploration, click on descriptive. You can move these two variables here. That is a BMI and you can move this cholesterol also. Then you can plot the QQ plot and box plot. So come to this plot. I can come here and I can mark this because sample size is more than one, more than 50. So what we discussed yesterday, when the sample size is less than 50, we apply the Shapiroville test. When the sample size is more than 50, we apply QQ plot. So in this case, the sample size is 180. You can see the number of N here. So I have applied the QQ plot and then I will apply this box plot also because I want to see for the outlier. 
So I have applied these two things. And then you can see this, there are some outlier in the BMI score. And if you come to this uh, QQ plot, it is approximately normally distributed because most of the data points are along this diagonal line. Coming to the cholesterol, you can see there are none, no outlier in the cholesterol. Whereas this is again normally distributed because they, you can see that most of the data points are across this diagonal line. So we have checked for the second and third assumption. So we have checked for the first assumption that is that two variables should be continuous in nature and it should be a paired data which we check. Second, we checked regarding the outlier, which we check with the box plot and that we checked with the option of this exploration in the analysis. You have to tick the box plot and you have to tick the QQ plot. Why we are taking that QQ plot? Because the sample size is more than 50. Had the sample size been less than 50, we would have ticked this statistics in the statistics you can see there is a shapiro will test and remember the shapiro will test here the p value is not desirable so we want p value to be more than 0 0.05 if the p value of this test is more than 0 0.05 then we say that the data is normally distributed but it gives a uh, it, it, it gives a false value if the sample size is high. That means more than 50. That's why we should never uh, do this shapiro will test if the sample size is more than 50. So I've checked for that. Now I'll go with the bivariate correlation. So this option comes in the regression. Can you see here? There is a regression. So you take this. I'll go again to the data first. So you can come to the analysis click this regression. In this regression, you can see there is an option known as the correlation matrix. So click this correlation matrix. And in this case, you can see here, you have to shift the variables here. So my variable is the BMI and the serum cholesterol. So I have shifted these two variables and you can see the correlation matrix. In this case, you have to tick the Pearson correlation because the data is normally distributed. If the data is not normally distributed, you will tick this Spearman. And then this, by clicking this report significance, that means it will tell you whether it is significant or not. This, by clicking this flag, it says you by a star mark, whether it is a single star, double star, or a triple star, depending on the level of significance. And then you can have this 95% confidence interval of this R also. And if you come down, and if you click this plot, so this I was talking, this linearity, because you can, Check this linearity by this option of exploration also. If you see this exploration, can you see the scatter plot here? So you can check the scatter plot option of the exploration also for linearity, or you can tick here because in SPSS, you have to do it separately. This option is not there in the command of bivariate correlation, but in Jamovi, this command is there in the bivariate correlation. So you can click this plot and then you can see so what you are seeing here, that this is the significant. So value of this correlation coefficient, this is 0.675, which is a strong correlation because what we did, we did that till if, it, it, the, if the value of correlation coefficient is more than 0.5, then it is a strong correlation. So this is a strong correlation and its P value is also, it is highly significant because it is, it is 0.001. And you can see here, so if you square it, what will be the value? 167. So let me do it. Maybe. So I'll do, maybe I'll take 0 0.7. 0 0.44. So 0 0.4, yeah. So 0 0.49 or 0 0.449, depending on whether you take it as a 0 0.7 or 0 0.6. Uh, six, seven. So that, uh, that will be your uh, coefficient of determination. And this coefficient of determination, that means that 49% of the variation in cholesterol is due to the uh, change in the BMI. This you have to interpret. And then you can see the scatter plot here. Here, uh, the lines, if you see it is, all, all, although it is not very linear, you can see here, but uh, we can apply. And this little bit deviation from linearity is called the tonic relationship. We call it monotonic and non-monotonic. 
So don't go into the these terminology. If you can remember that slight deviation of the linearity, it it accepts. So that's how you can apply the bivariate correlation in this case. And how to enter the result? That you you have. I mean, already you can import this table, or again you can have a this. Uh, dummy table with you where you can enter this like you can enter here the variables you can write and the pure value of r with its coefficient of determination the only thing which we want to emphasize that whenever you uh, put such tests you should always mention regarding the assumptions so those of you who have attended the spss workshop it may be a repetition but we do mention all the assumptions like in this case you can uh, see that we we mentioned regarding the normality we mentioned you can see that we have mentioned that it it is the relationship is linear with both variable no outlier or some outlier are there and uh, you can uh, comment about the normality by qq plot and then you can comment about the value of r the significance level and the value of r square so we have not filled the values here because it depends on the variable which you take for as a bivariate correlation but most of the time you don't do a single correlation you you present a correlation matrix now how to do that correlation matrix so for that like maybe in this case along with these two variable if i want to put more variables so let's let's maybe put i can put age also here maybe the systolic blood pressure vitamin d so all these uh, variables are there and then you can see here the correlation matrix so it is there and you can again if you uh, like enter your variable the way you want to enter it in your table this directly you can copy paste this table and there is no need to make a separate table for it unlike spss because in spss you will see this whole output is populated the data here is also populated and we take we used to draw a line across the diagonal and we used to take these values but here in jammu we they don't give the value of correlation coefficient with the same variable like in remember in uh, spss they will give the correlation coefficient between cholesterol and cholesterol age and age so it it used to be like a rectangular table but in this case it is not it is it will only give you the uh, relevant correlation coefficient and by seeing the star and the sign and you need to uh, comment regarding the sign also like in this case you can see with age it, it, it is negative with the this uh, sbp it is negative with vitamin d it is positive and this star tells you whether it is significant highly significant depending on the number of stars and this you can see if there are less number of variables there's a beautifully drawn scatter plot here and you can directly copy and paste it in your result section and because the i i i mean we like this output of this graph it is very beautiful in jammu v and those of you who will do the advanced data analysis like regression logistic regression and survival there also this graph is beautifully drawn so this you can directly copy paste in your result section uh, uh, showing that whether it is linear or not and you can see that most of these are uh, a linear relationship uh, all these uh, scatter plot so this is how and uh, again interpretation you have to write again i am not telling you the uh, checking of the normality and outlier but you need to check for all this in the exploratory also go to this descriptive and with the qq plot and box plot you check for the outlier and normality also because those are also important assumption and if the data is not normally distributed then instead of that you can apply spearman correlation because pearson will not be a choice of test then so again interpretation if you see the interpretation uh, this is the table the dummy table and you can directly copy paste it like we have shown the jamovi output is like that and then again you can involve all these assumptions here regarding all the variables and then you can comment comment regarding the coefficient of determination and value of r along with its sign so i hope these uh, this session is uh, clear to you this was a relatively simple session with less of commands and less of interpret uh, underlying assumption if anything uh, you want me to repeat before you go to the breakout room then i will repeat otherwise we'll directly go to the breakout room because we have three breakout room and five more sessions after this all chi square types mac nimer and risk also 
So any any questions which you which you want? I just want a small, a small question, actually, small question regarding the uh, will will uh, something uh, sparrow test, wilk sparrow test. Yeah, ma'am. So the how to check the normality like Shapiro uh, wilk. Shapiro wilk, sorry, Shapiro oh, wilk. I was thinking what was that sparrow because you know, I, no, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay. That, that, no, never mind. Yeah. So yes. So do you want me to test? Okay, I'll tell you. No, no, I just want to key. How do we interpret? You are telling something zero point five if it's positive. Okay, I'll tell you. Yeah. I'll tell you. So although with this, although the data is one eighty, I said. So this will show opposite result. The QQ plot and the value of Shapiro will will test you the opposite result. But I'll tell you what. Actually, see the null hypothesis in case of a Shapiro will test is that the two that the variable is normally distributed. That's why what we do most of the time, we reject the null hypothesis and we accept the alternate hypothesis, and then we say that the p-value is less than point zero five. Do you agree with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this case, the null hypothesis says that the data is normally distributed. So if the p-value is more than point zero five, then only we will accept the null hypothesis. That's why we say that p-value should be more than point zero five to say. That the data is normally, normally distributed. So I'll show you maybe like you go to the exploration descriptive. If like I want to test, uh, I am just removing this because I don't want mean, median, and mode. I only want this plot. So I'll go to this plot. Maybe I'll shift the variable. So I have shifted all the variables here. Maybe that BMI, and then up till this cortisol. I have shifted this, and I will. This Shapiro will. I'm not plotting now the box plot and QQ. I have shown you this box plot and QQ. So if you see this Shapiro will test, it gives you this is the Shapiro will value, but we take this value, the p value. This is the Shapiro will statistics. So statistics we are not focusing on. We will focus on. Sorry, just just a second. So we will focus on this last row. Can you see this last row? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can see there are various values in BMI score. You will see that it is 0 0.001. In SBP one, the value is 0 0.023. In cholesterol, it is 0 0.001. In vitamin D, it is 0 0.001. And in cortisol, it is 0 0.092. So if I have to comment only on the basis of Shapiro will test, then I will say. That all these variables except cortisol is not normally distributed because the p value in all these four cases are less than 0 0.05. So I'll say that these variables are not normally distributed, they are skewed. According to this Shapiro Wilk statistics, only cortisol is the normal distributed data. Okay. Is it clear to you? Yeah, 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 ma'am. Thank you. But remember that if you apply both Shapiro will, and because in SPSS statistics both comes, like Shapiro will, uh, it comes by default. But in this case, you have an option. Okay. So large sample size, I mean, this is uh, not very. This Shapiro will will always be usually less than 0 0.05. That's why we say that this is not a good way of. Testing, although it is objective in nature, because in QQ plot, you have to visualize. So it is a bit subjective. Q, this Shapiro Wilk is a very objective way to determine normality. But since the only limitation is sample size, so if your sample is less than 50, up till 50, then you can use the Shapiro Wilk. This is a very accepted way of testing normality. Yeah, ma'am, ma can we uh, do QQ plot for all the box plot for the sample less than uh, 50 in that case? If it's, uh, you can, but in that case, the instead of going with not, the uh, will see box plot. So you have to do for, yeah, yeah. for less than fifty yeah. also, because that is the only way to test outlier. But for QQ plot, like that, it will you will be confused with the QQ plot, the kind of graph because the points are very less in number. Fifty points are not that high point to give it a linear uh, figure. So that maybe you will get confused with the visualization of QQ plot. So you can draw, but it is not recommended. So ideally, you should only report the Shapiro Wilk. Or you can use histo because there are other ways also. Like I, I told you, 
the values of kurtosis and the this is skewness if it is more than 2 then it is also skewed or the histogram with the superimposed curve that also can tell you regarding that so you can use more than one way uh, to determine this normality okay. thank you thank you very much